hey everyone and welcome back to our channel so in today's video we are going to be talking about uh, this conversation that is happening around the usa one that's bringing to light some real tension within uh communities okay so after recent uh, the recent elections and ongoing social shifts a lot of uh, black american women are choosing to distance themselves from causes and issues um they feel don't prioritize their needs many feel betrayed by the broader system especially when they see how certain groups voted some are even saying they would rather face a bear than being caught in the same room with uh, uh people who don't support them okay so today i've put uh some clips for you guys to help you understand better to better understand why this sentiment exists what led to it and uh what it means for black women's support moving forward let's watch together these clips and remember to keep uh, the comments uh, respectful as we don't support bullying and hateful speech on this channel otherwise youtube will flag your comment okay you'll notice that your comment will disappear it's because of that okay watch these clips and i'll leave my own two cents at the end of this video i made a video yesterday saying white ladies this is why black women picked the bear over us and like clockwork in my comments you can't call out white ladies without also calling out the latino men who voted for trump yes i can <laughs> unless you're gonna address the entire problem don't call out white women and then i said i don't have to call you out because you're in my comments proving their point and now it's comment not available and like clockwork no and see we're still white womening like you that's the whole problem she describes the exact problem well if you're gonna call us in call in latino men i'm white that's not my job y'all forget that that like rule number one stay in your own damn lane you're just mad someone's calling you out so you want to say, well, what about them? You should know damn good and well, why not? Internet activists fuck around and find out what happens when black American people withdraw their support. Stitching my own video because a bad never wrong. A bad bitch is never wrong. I'm like the fucking Chicago Bulls in the 1996 season. I, oh, I'm on a run. If you have the attention span that I have, basically what I said in that video is that foreign people of color who immigrate to America and catch themselves trying to be wannabe white supremacists and fuck sucking masses, three inch pink dick, thinking that it's doing something for them, fuck around and find out what happens when black American people withdraw their support for your cause. And in the wake of the 2024 US presidential election results, I'm watching that happen in live time. And I'm sorry, I'm enjoying it. I'm eating it up. Black people, black American people who haven't purchased Starbucks or McDonald's in over a year are basically crashing the mobile apps for both of those uh, franchises right now with how much they're repurchasing those items in the wake of the exit polls of who did and did not vote for Kamala Harris in the 2024 election. The uh, Starbucks app crashed, I think, because so many people were just using it out of nowhere, like all at once it crashed. You see what happens? You see? And please... Please, please do not come in my comments with your bullshit about this is not the time for that and you guys were never there for us anyway and um, we all need to come together now because now this really impacts all of us. The time to come together was in that motherfucking voting booth, little bitch. That was the time to come together. And you didn't want to do that because Kamala Harris is black and is also a woman. Okay, the time to come together was when Kamala Harris, after meeting with Netanyahu, released a press statement stating that the loss of life in Palestine and in Gaza is completely and utterly unacceptable. And we are negotiating for a ceasefire in bucking up against even what Biden himself said he would do. That was the time to come together for that candidate. Instead, instead, you either voted for stupid ass Jill Stein, who took your vote and your money and ran off into the sunset, or you voted for Trump who in his first campaign post-election speech is saying the first thing he's going to do is round up Hamas supporters? You know that means you, right? Do you know that means you? Do you know you have 30 minutes? A bad biz never wrong. A bad bitch with a good uh, synthetic beauty supply helmet wig is never wrong. And I am that bad bitch on today. Praise God. I'll fuck them ugly ass, stupid ass, fugazi ass, <laughs> jabroni ass, blue bracelets of solidarity. That's that guilt eating you up, isn't it? No, blue bracelets, shove it up your ass so far that it comes out your fucking throat. Fuck that. How about, forget the blue bracelet. Can you write me a check with some green money? Can you do that? That would be far more useful and helpful 
in the face of what is going to be some really costly tariffs and increased taxes on our goods and things like that. Can you do that instead? If not, keep your stupid ass blue bracelet. For all I know, that could just mean that you're quietly supporting Blue Lives Matter. Shut up. We needed the support in the booth. And in the booth, the only people who got active were black people and surprisingly Jewish people. So shout out to Jewish people also as well. It bears repeating and foreign people who come to America refuse to accept this fact. Black people and white people will be at each other's throats all the live long day until a foreign non-English speaking person walks in the room and then all that shit goes out the fucking window. All of it, I promise you. As a foreign born person myself, who is now a naturalized citizen, who was born to people who have been in America lawfully all these years, just in case anyone is looking for me. My father was a US citizen. My mom was a lawful permanent resident prior to becoming a US citizen. Ice go suck your ass, mother. Um, but as a foreigner myself, I've seen it firsthand and I've experienced it firsthand. Black and white people in this country have an understanding of one another. They have a delicate equilibrium with one another, okay? And again, at each other's throats, at each other's necks, threatening this, that, and the next until a non-English speaking foreign person walks in the room. And if you don't believe me, if you dare to disagree with a bad bitch with a law degree in her helmet wig, I want you to take a long look back at how the country came together in the wake of the September 11th terror attacks. 9-11 really set some shit off for the entire world, Americans in particular, okay? Black and white people prior to September 11th, 2001, black and white people were at each other's throats over the George Bush election, the election between Bush and Gore and those missing Florida ballots, okay? I was a kid in elementary school, but I remember this and I'm 32 years old now. So I know some of my fellow slightly older millennials definitely remember this for sure. Black and white people were at each other's throats up and to and until them September 11th attack attacks happened. And you know what happened? We closed ranks. Or excuse me, black and white, uh, black American people and white American people closed ranks so fucking quickly. Oh my God. And that's exactly what's happening now. So thing around and finding out is something I do not recommend for everyone because not everyone can handle it. Black American people and people of African descent in general are accustomed to living under white supremacy and colonialism and having to survive nonetheless and eke out a little itty bitty tiny whiff of a life. We're accustomed to that. The rest of y'all, I don't know what you guys are going to do, but we'll be fine. Okay, you guys can go take them blue bracelets and all them um, uh, marches and protests and stuff. I ain't doing it. Mm -mm. Because when it came down to it, when it really mattered was in that voting booth. I don't want to hear excuses. I don't want to hear about how they're so bad and how both parties were bad. Excuses, 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 excuses. So tell me how bad Trump is now compared to um, Harris and Biden. Tell me quickly. And that's another thing you infighting. And that's the last thing I'm going to say about this today. Um, you infighting liberals and infighting leftists and shit like that. You have a very skewed perception of the world. This is where your ivory towered theory and rhetoric falls by the wayside. Because the other side, our enemies, you know what they unite on? Hate and bigotry. But they unite. The rest of us over here have this false perception that everything in the world is supposed to be perfect. So that when we are trying to implement certain tasks and statutes and legislations, we have to have unanimous consensus. It has to be done perfectly, flawlessly. Our elected officials, our notable figures can be without flaw of any kind. Our legislation and our policies have to be without any flaw of any kind, are not allowed to have nuance and are not allowed to take into account historical context, modern day context, gender and race context. We're not allowed to do those things. And that is how we failed. Too much infighting, too much disagreement. And the other side, by comparison, looks like the staid, cons uh, not conservative necessarily, but predictable and stable option. Because at least they agree on their hate and bigotry. What exactly do Democrats agree on? I personally think it's time for some new Democratic leadership. As David Hogg on Twitter said, you know, we have a uh, corporate oligarchy masquerading as a party. I personally think we need to do away with some of these East Coast, West Coast Democrats who are caught up in theory and liberalism and never ever listen to their base. They always shit on their base in every single way possible. And we need to start putting people at the top who are like from the heartland of America. Like I am living in the Midwest. 
and I live in the Rust Belt that these liberals call the Midwest, we need to start putting more people like us at the top and in those leadership positions so we can become the establishment class because y'all ivory tower ivy league attending born into generational intellectuals and shit you may not be born into generational wealth but they were born into generational intellectuals y'all argue too much things have to be far too perfect kamala was the perfect candidate jesus was perfect and you know what they did to his ass think but my point still stands. Foreign people of color coming to America, fuck around and find out exactly, exactly what the fuck happens when black American people tell you to go fuck yourself. And now look at us. Okay, so we've heard uh, from both sides um, where the white people stand on this. And uh, we've heard from our sister, you know, break this down. And... Uh, According to what I'm getting from this, um, it's clear that uh, for many black women, this moment has become a catalyst for some serious shifts in uh, priorities and support. Um, over the past uh, few months, they've started moving in new directions, sometimes even in, in ways that uh, might surprise us all. After boycotting uh, certain brands or businesses for over a year, a lot of uh, black women are making their way back to places like uh, Starbucks and uh, McDonald's. And let's just say the, the impact is huge. Apps are crashing. Demand is surging. It's obvious that, uh, it's obvious that uh, their support is powerful and uh, unmistakable. And you don't want to mess with such people, you know. People are, are giving you such a support that uh, when they take that into an app, when they take that energy on an app, the app is crashing. Okay, you cannot mess with such people who give you such support. Okay, so you may wonder or ask yourself like, um, why the shift? Why the shift though? It's a powerful response to feeling uh, let down by a society that for some for some seems to overlook their needs voices and uh, experiences the 2020 election uh, was eye-opening many saw firsthand how voting uh, decisions uh, reflected deeper divides in understanding and uh, valuing justice equality and uh, real change and for black women there's just no patient Patients left for empty promises or systems that haven't uh, stepped up, okay? And uh, this isn't just about who voted for who. It's about trust, about feeling supported, and about seeing actions that actually match words. We're also seeing the rise of the uh, 4B movement with uh, black women saying it's time to focus on themselves, uh, their communities, and each other. For some, this even means uh, celibacy as an act of uh, self-preservation and uh, boundaries. Because, you know, we had uh, black men who also, like a lot of black men voted for Trump as well. So my sisters are going, you know, celibacy by force it's a stance that for many uh, re reinforce the idea of taking control refusing to give time and energy to anyone who doesn't stand for their needs and their values yeah so this shift in energy is about uh, protecting their peace reclaiming agency and uh, making sure that uh, support goes where it's genuinely and and the message here is uh, clear. It's no longer enough for anyone to just talk about uh, supporting black women. They want action. If that doesn't happen, they are afraid to walk away. You know, they've promised, they've sworn to say as long as Trump is in the office, this act is going to be there for four years. They'll be e eating McDonald's, uh, Starbucks for four years, celibacy <laughs> for four years. <laughs> okay i don't know about that i'm not sure about that i don't know how far they're willing to go with that okay um uh, but i want you guys to let me know um according to our discussion what i've mentioned what i've talked about what you've heard from these women uh, in this video the the sister in this video the palm color people in this video 
let me know what you think about this in the comment section and as usual i just want to say thank you for joining me on this uh conversation it's powerful to see these movements unfold and i hope this this video has shed light on why so many are feeling this way and making these choices let me know your thoughts uh, down below as always keep the conversation respectful let's continue listening learning and understanding how we can all move forward together and um as usual i'll say stay peaceful and i'll see you in my next video thank you